Welcome to the Lotus Map Editor tutorial. Some of you guys waited for this maybe a long time, but the reason why it took so long is that the Lotus Map Editor is currently a bit under construction. So maybe there are some changes of the user interface or whatever in the near future. But to get you started with the Map Editor, I want to show you some basic principles which won't change in the future. So this is the screen when you start your map editor. On the left side we got some categories. The categories may spoil an order how to start with the map editor. So the first thing you should modify is the terrain. So you can use DEM files, but uh, DEM files doesn't always have the right height in the file saved. So you need you need some planes to get your custom terrain and to get your terrain matching your needs. Next thing are the helplines. With the helplines you can define some lengths and, and angles and so on, which may help you to get some splines in the right position or easily you could say the helplines uh, makes your workflow way better. You will see what I mean in this video. I guess scenery objects are not quite new to you, I hope so. So it's basically the objects you can place here with like houses or trees or whatever. A new thing are polygons. So you can define a polygon which has a several texture. You mainly will use polygons to create some street crossings or so on. Splines are a bit advanced, so you don't have only one type of spline. There are three now. The first type is a standard spline, which has no special behavior. The second one cuts into the terrain, so there won't be any spaces between the splines and the terrain. And the third one are stuff like street lines or abrasion or something like that. The next three categories are special splines, so like rail tracks, you may have a special behavior which may not be displayed by a simple spline. Also with some sleepers or the catenary. These three categories are special splines, so you can so you can place them in your map without a special thread. Last two categories are environment, so you can choose between some settings like the wireframe mode. So our terrain looks like this at the moment in the wireframe mode. We need this mode in the next episode way more often. In the last is the information category where the uh, count of the uh, tiles are displayed. Last thing we need for this episode is down here at the bottom. So you can choose between this two dimensional view we have we've got currently. So we'll, by pressing the mouse wheel you can change your position of the camera or when you scroll you can zoom in or zoom out. But if you choose the uh, three dimensional mode you can see obviously in the third dimension but you will you rotate the view with the mouse wheel and zoom in and zoom out as if you want to move your camera you have to press the mouse wheel and simultaneously press shift okay so let's get back into the two-dimensional view and talk about the helplines also a fact is that if you create something you mostly be in the two-dimensional view so as we now want to create some helplines it's the right mode for us when there are two buttons in a category you can choose between normal line or two parallel lines so we choose a normal line and if we click on the button we've got the helpline on our cursor so there are three steps to create a terrain element and helpline a spline, a rail track, catenary, whatever has three steps. So the first step is you choose a position. If you click once with the left mouse button, you got your position defined and you can now set the rotation of this. As you can see here, there is a magnet at 90 degrees each. Or if you don't want to have this magnet, you can press shift. So the magnet disappears and you can smoothly create your helpline. Keep in mind that every move interaction with the user interface in Lotus Map Editor will be de defined if you held down the shift key. So 
We want to set an helpline straightforward. So we get this magnet in work. And now we are in the third step also by clicking left mouse button. And you can now choose an angle and the radius or you simply choose only a length. You see here, there are also some magnets about the radius and the angle. The uh, magnet is also at 90 degrees. What's important uh, in this version, you can see what you have at an actual values at the bottom of your window. So if you want to check your values you're currently having, we want a straightforward helpline. And if you look at the values down below, you see we've got 164 meters. So it's way too much. If you want to set your own values, not by scrolling the mouse over your mouse pad, you can choose any number of your keyboard. And if you choose five or so, this window opens and you can choose the length or the radius. For now, we create a helpline with the length of 50 meters. And as you see here, you instantly got a new helpline at your cursor. Let's, uh, as I said, there are some magnets at the radius and angle two. If you create another one, you will get the same amount of lengths and radius of the previous helpline or spline or whatever too. So you simply click a second time and now you've got your 180 degrees curve. If you want to do this in a in one spline, it's not possible. So as you can see here, it's the the highest angle value is about 170. So you need for a 180 degree curve, you need two helplines or splines or whatever. You can now set this, let's call it strange helpline. But what I want to show you is that helplines and splines and so on are working together. So you want to get a, these two helplines connected. So you want to make a very strange circle. And the easiest way to do so is to click on the end of this helpline we set in the first place. And if you click on it, you see the lines are not fully connected, but your helpline is in the same direction as the first. So if you now delete this helpline and create a new one, you got your circle and the message, unfortunately in German, was if you want to connect these two helplines. Obviously, we took the answer yes. Okay, there are way more interactions between helplines or splines or so. So if you choose another one, another helpline, you see when you click on these or, or hover above these connectors of the helplines, that they are interacting with each other. So this is also possible in this direction and so on. I hope you see what I mean. And the, this, that's the first thing of interaction. Second thing is that you can also, if you hover above the helpline, there are some other interactions and you also can click on an already built helpline and with the right mouse button and you can get the radius or the length or the angle or the rotation as the target. I choose the length and as you see here, the length is now at 47.9 meters and won't change until you click on the right, right mouse button to get a step back. So now you can freeform your helpline again. And if you choose another thing, uh, maybe the rotation as target, you see here, that we have a similar functionality as hovering above this helpline. But in this case, it doesn't matter if you're hovering above the other helpline, you always have this rotation. Also a thing is that you can click on cancel. So you got a step back in your creation of the help. As you can see here, you now choose the rotation. We can use this feature to get some not so common creations, but this helps you a lot when you're creating some crossings. By speaking of crossings, when you place some rails or so on, which have a path on it, you may want to create a junction. And there is one thing you should keep in mind when creating a junction that you always have to build a full path consisting of two parts, this. And now you can get at the middle connector and place your junction. This is a working example of a junction. Not working should be something like this, where you first get down the 
junction and then place the third helpline or rail or whatever at the end. This won't work on the left side. So let's delete it. If you click on the helpline or on an object with the left mouse button, you select it obviously. And with the delete key on your keyboard, you can delete this. Okay, this should be the case for this tutorial. In the next episode, I want to talk about the cutting features you can use to create your map. So we won't only use helplines in the next episode. So I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.